Hello everyone, welcome back to another video of analysing the Apollo moon photographs. And in particular, we're going to be looking today at probably the most famous of them all, ingeniously entitled The Man on the Moon. Now this is a photo of Buzz Aldrin that was taken by Neil Armstrong on Apollo 11. And there's aspects of this picture that a lot of people point to as proof that the moon landings weren't real, that they were all faked in a studio. And so let's analyse those points today. The first point that I've seen a few people raise is it's just so perfect. You know, it's just such a, a perfect photograph that it can't possibly have been done on the moon by astronauts with a camera strapped to the chest and no viewfinder. It must have been done in a studio because it's just everything is so clinical. Now, in reality, over the years, this particular photo has seen some editing because it is such an iconic photo. So let's look at the original scan of the film. And from a purely technical standpoint of a photographer, this image is actually rather bad. I mean, the original scan is quite underexposed. You can see that they've had to brighten it up later. More notable though, the horizon's completely crooked. You usually want a perfectly flat horizon, this thing's all skewed, so the camera wasn't actually square. There is also then the principle of the rule of thirds, which states that the horizon and or your subject's face should be situated on the lines around one third of the way left or right or up and down of your image. Now looking at the original scan, that's not actually the case. If the horizon here was one third of the way across the image, that would put the center of the picture somewhere round about Buzz Aldrin's crotch area. Now, this particular photo was taken with uh, the Hasselblad data camera, which was the one fitted with the resu plate. Now the resu plate is the glass plate inside the camera that puts all the crosshairs over the pictures that you see on all of the lunar surface photos. Now all of these crosshairs are always equal distance apart and all the same size apart from the one in the middle. The one in the very center is actually larger, which makes it easier to identify. And on the original Man on the Moon photograph, that center crosshair is nowhere near his sort of midriff. It's down near his right foot. So the whole shot, the camera's actually tilted much further down than any professional photographer would ideally want in that situation. In fact, the composition is so marginal here. It's actually, he's just about cut the top of the backpack off as well. So really from from a composition standpoint this image isn't that good even if you look at publications when this image was printed back in 1969 they've shifted the the position of it possibly to try and make the horizon slightly straighter but more to to shift that rule of thirds issue so they've they've cut the bottom of the picture off and they've left some blank space over the top of it to try and put Buzz back in the sort of rule of thirds area that you would want him to be in. And the exposure looks like it's been tweaked slightly as well. And now in more recent years with the introduction of digital software like Photoshop, there's been more meticulous attempts made to fix those issues, maybe patch up the, the missing part of his backpack and stuff as well. But there's one aspect to that picture that you can't fix with Photoshop either, which is another imperfection. If you look at his suit, you can see that there's some writing on his chest. So he's got his, his name and he's got some other writing to the other side of it. But it's not completely clear. It's not completely sharp. But if we look at the foreground about two foot in front of him, the ground there looks sharper. That's because the plane of focus isn't actually on buzz, it's it's a bit too close, the, the camera's not focused properly. Not enough that it would completely ruin the image, but it's still there, he's not completely in focus. So actually that image is far from being perfect. You know, the exposure's not perfect, the composition's not perfect, the focus isn't even right either. So no, that I mean, that is not to say technically that it, you know, wouldn't have been done in a studio. In terms of 
pure technical photography, this image is far from being perfect. It's just famous and iconic. You know, this image is deemed more just as perfect because of what it is, not how it looks. But the bigger aspect of this image that people have argued points to it looking fake is the apparent fall off of the light. Now, if you look at most Apollo images, like this one, for example, you can see pretty evenly lit landscape. There will always be some variation in the lighting, just as you get undulations. If you've got little dips and, and, climb, and rises in the, in the landscape, that's going to change how the light's reflecting so you might get more or less, which is going to create sort of slightly brighter or darker patches. You also might get, obviously, different textures if you've got some areas that's quite thick dust versus other areas that are more rocky. That might change the colouring and the apparent brightness. But generally, you will see a fairly even lit surface. However, on the likes of this image, the foreground here looks a bit brighter than it does in the background, which is normally akin to light fall off. For example, you know, I have a light just here. If I put my hand here versus here, the hand that is closer to the light is going to look quite a bit brighter because the light hitting it is more concentrated. It's not had the chance to dissipate quite so much. And so if you illuminate something with a spotlight, you usually get a very bright hot spot area where the light is focused, and then you get the light falling off the further away it gets, which is similar to how this looks. Now, there is actually the American Moon documentary looks at that one particular photo and has some professional photographers who, I think the portrait photographers, all looking at that picture and all saying it looks like it's lit by a spotlight. They even had someone from Hasselblad, who worked on the project of producing the cameras, who looked at that and said, it looks like it's lit by a spotlight, and he couldn't explain why it looked like it was lit by a spot lamp if it was taken on the moon. Now, that particular clip has been used many times for people arguing that, you know, the, the, well, if, if the guy who made the camera doesn't understand, you know, says that it can't have been taken on the moon, then it can't have been taken on the moon. In fairness, the individual was the project manager of the Hasselblad program to produce the 500 cameras for the Apollo missions. Being a project manager doesn't automatically mean he's a photographer. In reality, Producing a camera, you don't have to know about lighting and understand photography to work on making a camera, especially those older cameras where they're not producing the film, they're not producing the lenses, they're just producing a camera body that works with them. It doesn't automatically mean that he knows the principles of photography. It just means he's managing the project. I mean, the project manager at Grumman who produced the Lunar Module was a uh, aeronautics engineer. I think he worked on, I think he did um, thrust engines. So not a pilot, not an astronaut, but, you know, was was just able to lead a project. So just because that one individual at Hasselblad can't answer it doesn't necessarily mean that there is something afoot. And again, the, the, prof the professional photographers, the studio photographers, are right in saying that it looks like it could be lit by a spot lamp in the sense that the the fall off on the surface does look similar to what you would see in a, with a spot lamp but there are other explanations i mean for starters if it was a spot lamp that was that close then the shadow of buzz would look different that the light would have to be quite close you would get softer edges on the the shadow which we're not seeing but there is also one very big elephant in the room and by big elephant in the room i mean a 200 square foot foil covered spacecraft that they're standing right next to you can see in buzz's visor he's right next to the lunar module you can see how reflective it is 
the foot of it is in the bottom of the shot and you can see the amount of reflection that's coming off that. And judging by the direction of the shadow, the sunlight is coming from somewhere in the top right corner of this image, which means it's going to be shining against one whole side of the lunar module. And that is then going to be acting as a giant reflector and throwing a load of light back out. Now, because that then is a local light source, you are going to see a lot of fall off from that. And there is clues to this being the case in other photos. If you look through some of the other Apollo photos, you will know images with the lunar module in the shot, if they are standing with essentially facing towards the sun or with the sun in the general direction that the camera's facing, you get the light shining towards the camera, hitting the lunar module and then reflecting away back towards the surface and creates that extra lighting. If they shoot with the sun either off, say, 90 degrees to the sides or behind them, they're not seeing that same hot spot in the surface. And just to expand on this particular image a bit further, so again, this one we do see that even lighting on the surface, we're not getting a load of reflection off the, the lunar module. But there's other characteristics of this image, which again suggests that this being done in a studio isn't going to be that easy to do. In fact, it's going to be nigh and impossible to do in a studio because one, we have the even lit surface. I've seen a few people suggest that the Apollo 11 shots must have been done in a studio because the, the shadow of the lunar module stops just by the horizon. So that's got to be the, the edge of the studio. But we can actually see that they're parked just near the edge of a crater. So the landscape rises slightly and then drops off. So really what you're actually seeing isn't the edge of a studio, it's the edge of a cliff in essence. But here we have, not only do we have an even lit surface, which a large area to light would need a very big studio, would then need a light source that is big enough to evenly illuminate it. We've got very hard edge shadows being produced by the, the solar panels here. It can't be a, a diffused light because that produces soft edge lighting. It's got to be a spot lamp, so it's got to be very far away. And a few people have suggested, well, what if they didn't do these in a studio? What if they did them out in just the desert? You know, uh, I've seen suggestions of them being done in the desert around Area 51 just in daylight and then edit the pictures up afterwards. But even that, there's a few aspects that make that highly unlikely. You'll see there's very dark shadows here. Now, if you look at images on Earth, you quite often see that you'll see defined shadows, but especially in daylight, the shadows aren't jet black because you get a lot of light reflecting off just objects nearby. And moreover, you get light ref refracting and reflecting off the particles in the atmosphere. So you very rarely see very jet black shadows in a, a normal exposed image. You have to buy the very underexposure image or add additional lighting to the the bright areas of your image in order to allow for a, a, an overall lower exposure to darken up the shadows more. You rarely see jet black shadows on a, on a, on a sunlit day. It can't have been done at night because moonlight is just not bright enough to produce that, that amount of light without at least very high sensitivity film that would just be very grainy. If it was done in the day, you would have a blue sky to contend with. Now, yes, you've got the argument of, well, they could have not photoshopped because Photoshop didn't exist back then, but they could have used, you know, an optical printer. They could have, they could have laid, o laid over and masked out the sky. But you've then got all of these objects like the flag and some of the equipment and the lunar module itself that are all in the distance. They're all out of focus. They're not hard to find edges uh, around it. They're all slightly softened. You get that, that fading of pixels. And yet there's no sign in anywhere of those that, you know, there's no hint of 
blue sky seeping through. There's no signs of sudden hard edge cuts where, you know, the black's been done a bit too hard. I mean, I personally have tried doing it in modern Photoshop where I've tried masking out, you know, a, a daylight sky to try and make it black. And if there's objects on the above the horizon that are sticking into it, it becomes so apparent. The pixels just become... You either end up with softening the pixels, which then distorts the shape of the object, or you wind up with hard edge pixels that look quite clear that it's been brushed over. When you're trying to deal with such a, a, a drastic shift between, you know, a blue sky to jet black, it's almost impossible to to edit that out in such a way. Maybe if you're lucky, you might get it on one or two pictures, but to do it on every single picture of thousands of images is not something that I can deem as, as being at all possible. I mean, I'm sure people will still disagree with it, but there you have it. That is going to conclude this particular video. If you have any questions, queries, any further input, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe button, and then hopefully... We'll see you in the next video.